Lastly, let's discuss the spermatic cord, and we've talked about it a little bit uh, in terms of where it's actually located. You're going to have the spermatic cord associated with the internal portion, starting in the deep inguinal ring. You'll also have it located in the external portion of the male reproductive system, or the scrotum. And that makes sense in terms of its function. It's it will suspend the testes and help in terms of the descent of the testes from the abdomen into the scrotum. Also, this is kind of just a collection of that neurovasculature, lymphatics, ducts to and from the testes that are associated with either blood supply or innervation or allowing for the sperm to actually exit through the testes back through um, the internal portion to go through the urethra. So let's talk a little bit about the root and where you can actually locate the spermatic cord. Um, it actually starts around what's referred to the deep inguinal ring, and you can't see it in this image because it's deep. You can't see it unless you're looking at the posterior portion of the anterior abdominal wall. Um, this is going to be just uh, lateral to your inferior epigastric vasculature. So it will enter in through the deep inguinal ring, it will travel through the inguinal canal, um, and we know the inguinal canals from your anterior superior iliac spine to about to the pubic tubercle or the superficial uh, inguinal ring. This is how it's actually exiting. And then it will enter into the scrotum. The spermatic cord has a lot of contents, but these contents need to be protected protected, so you have various coverings of um, the spermatic cord. First, you're going to have this internal spermatic fascia, which is um, a specialization of your transversalis fascia. I think I spelled that wrong. Transversalis. There we go. That's right. Transversalis fascia. You're also going to have cremasteric fascia. And the cremasteric fascia I want to spend a little time on. Um, cremasteric fascia will have various types of connective tissue, but also your cremaster muscle. So your cremaster muscle are just going to be slips of your internal oblique muscle. So one of those uh, anterior lateral abdominal muscles. And the cremaster muscle, cremaster muscle will contract and actually will kind of lift the spermatic cord and with the spermatic cord, the testes, kind of more uh, superiorly to kind of get it closer to the body to raise the temperature if needed if uh, the uh, spermatic cord of the scrotum is going to have some type of reflex to a cold environment. The most external covering of the spermatic cord will be the external spermatic fascia as its name would suggest and this is going to be a specialization of your external oblique abdominal muscle. So you can see a little bit, you can't really tell the differentiation between these coverings, but you can see how nicely compact um, these coverings protect these deeper structures within the spermatic cord. So on this side of this illustration, um, these coverings have been removed in order to show you the contents. So what are these contents? I keep talking about them, um, so let's talk about some of the specifics. Now one that we've talked about over and over again is this ductus deferens. This is a duct by which the sperm will travel from the testes to eventually get to the prostatic urethra. Additionally, you're going to have various arteries. The largest of these will be your testicular artery. This is a gonadal artery, similar to your ovarian artery in females, and this is coming directly off of the aorta, off of your abdominal aorta. You'll also have an artery of the ductus deferens, so what's actually supplying that duct, as well as a cremasteric artery. So these are considerably smaller, you can't see it very well in this image, but play a role in terms of supplying those structures. Now one of the most prominent things you can see in this image is all of this blue in this region. These are uh, components of your pampiniform plexus of veins. So pampiniform plexus you have around 12 to 15 veins that are going to coalesce and join up to form or to drain into your testicular vein. 
testicular vein will eventually drain into either the renal vein or directly into the inferior vena cava. So important because this is part of the caval system, not the portal system. Additionally, you will have small nerves associated with this region. One in particular is your genital branch of genitofemoral. And this particular nerve is important because this is what's going to innervate that cremaster muscle. You'll also have sympathetics and parasympathetic nerves that are going to be important in terms of really act activating portions of this region here are innervating. And lastly, you're going to have lymphatics that are going to drain this region, eventually heading up towards the iliac portions of the lymphatic system. So there's a lot of structure within the small spermatic cord, but keep in mind that the main function is really suspending these testes within the scrotum. So that is an overview of both the female and the male reproductive system. We talked a lot about glands in this particular part of the system, and so we're going to continue this discussion within this larger course of the endocrine system.